Today we're gonna to talk about how being in control as a business owner is going to destroy your business. My name is Michael Barav and I was able to build a team of 150 plus sales guys in less than two and a half years and now we have a solar company that's growing like crazy from coast to coast like butter on toast. So let's talk about this. Ego, E-G-O, right? And I always learned that with ego, there's no we, it's only about me, right? But let's talk about the control thing and I'm gonna give you guys five reasons why being in control as a business owner is not what you're looking for. Right, And I took some notes here because it's very important to understand that when you are in control, just to have an understanding better, right? when you are in control, it is all dependent on you. Right? Everything is about you. It's about you, your feelings, your emotions, your success, your everything. And that's a problem. And as a business owner, right, I used to think that having control was very important. Control is very dependent heavily on you as an individual. And when you really think about it, you don't want control. What you want is order. Because order doesn't depend on you. Order depends on a system, on a process, on a flow, right? And it's very important to understand that as a business owner, you don't want control, you want order. I don't wanna have control of every aspect of the business because if I have control of every single little thing and every single thing about the business, then I am a slave to the business, right? I'm, I'm attached to the business. And if you think about Google, Microsoft, all these big companies out there, do you really think the owners or even the CEOs or the vice presidents all have control of the business? Like there's so many people that have thousands of employees, right? What they have is order. They have a process, they have a flow, and that's why they're so successful because in a small setting, as when it's just you by yourself, when you have all the control, it's very easy. You can control yourself to go out there and work or you can control yourself to go not work, right? But as you start hiring one person, two people, you have a sales team of five people, 10 people, now it's not about controlling them because you can't control them. I mean, think about it. You have no control over another human being. You may think you're a genius and you can control their minds and influence them and persuade them, all the shit that you want to think about, but that's awesome. But that's not real, that's, that's not going to create success because the second you walk away, then you're like, oh shit, it gets to chaos, right? Because they can do whatever they want. Because nobody wants to be oppressed and controlled, right? So what you really want is order. What you really want is control of the system, of the process, right? Google has control over the process. They have control over the system. And that's how they keep everything in formality and everything kind of, kind of flowing through properly, right? So I'm gonna give you guys five reasons why control is actually not good for you, okay? Number one, okay, I got some notes here. Number one, when you control, right? When you control, it ends up becoming micromanagement. And do you think people operate very well under micromanagement? Think about that. Like, when, ha, when have you last time been micromanaged by somebody? If you have, right? I know, I remember I have, and I was like, holy shit, listen, buddy. <laughs> you told me to do something, like, let me do it. Like, teach me, of course, help me out, but like, I don't need you, like, I don't need to feel hot temperature, hot heat on, on, my, on my back neck. Like, I don't need that. Like, step away, give me some space, let me do it, and if I fuck up, and if I mess up, no problem, I call you, right? But when someone micromanages you, there's, like, they're literally breathing on your neck, what ends up happening is that you end up making more mistakes than you would normally, right? So you don't want to have control over people. You don't even want to have control over anything, right? What you want is people to do their own thing. You want people to, get, to control the process and control when these things get done. And you don't want micromanagement. You want to give people the, the power and the autonomy to create success. Because the second you give them power, the second you give them autonomy, the second you give them responsibility, of course with uh, accountability factor on the back end, what ends up happening is they create more success. Now there's a balance to that because I've seen a lot of leaders that make this mistake where they give people too much power, too much autonomy, too much freedom and they mess up. So there has to be a level of accountability. If there's accountability with the autonomy, with the power, with the freedom, what ends up happening is now you have success and you don't have micromanagement, okay? Number two, right? If you want to have control, and too much control, you lack innovation. Think about it. And when you want to control everything, there's no innovation because everything is dependent on you. Think about that. And let me ask you a question. Do you think you have all the amazing ideas? This is for my big ego people. Hey, I'm, I'm, welcome to this club, guys. I made this mistake many times over, and sometimes I keep making this mistake, right? Something we need to learn about. But lack of innovation, do you think I have all the ideas? Do you think you have all these ideas? No. There's a lot of ideas that come from other people. As a matter of fact, I would say 80% of my life and my success in my business has come from other people's ideas. And if I want to control everything, people don't give me those good ideas to implement. And, and sometimes you may have an environment where you say, yeah, I love ideas, suggestion box, all this shit. But at the end of the day, they don't feel that you're being listened to. They don't feel like they're being heard. They don't feel like their ideas even matter. So guess what? They don't create, they don't innovate, and then the competition smacks you in the face with their innovation. 
If you look at the most innovative companies, the most creative companies out there, their people have the flexibility and they have less people on their backs where they're given the chance to think creatively and create those innovations, create those ideas. They have the flexibility and the time frame to do what needs to get done. To, by the way, like I wish, like I sometimes think to myself, maybe I should give people an hour a day just to sit there and do nothing. Just think, think, be creative. Right? That's a good thing to do. And bring those ideas to us at the table, right? And let's have a conversation because it's really important. Because remember, if you have control, <laughs> there's not too much innovation, right? So if you don't feel like you have a lot of innovation in your company, it's because you're not listening, you're not paying attention, you have too much control over the team or, or, or anything else, right? Next, if you have control, you have a limited perspective. Think about it. This is your perspective. This is all you know. But there's way more information on this end and there's way more information on this end. So you're literally lacking perspective because you're only thinking about control. So control gives you lack of perspective. Lack of perspective doesn't help you accomplish the things from a different angle. For example, you can look at a coin and say, okay, there's a heads, there's tails. But when you lack perspective, you don't, you don't realize that there's another side. There's the edge, right? And sometimes you have to be good at standing at the edge and seeing things from two perspectives. So when you have more control of everything, you lack the perspective because you can't have that aerial view to say, huh, I like that. Huh, I don't like that. Huh, I can make better decisions here and better decisions there, right? And what ends up happening is that when you have too much control, the perspective diminishes, when perspective diminishes, ideas diminish. When ideas dimin diminishes, guess what happens? Your business dies. It becomes stagnant. And remember, in life, you're either growing or you're decaying. There's no like in the middle, right? When the second the start stagnation kicks in, boom, it starts to die, right? So it's very important you lack perspective when you actually have so much control because there's very little feedback for you. So you don't want that. Number four, if you have a lot of control, I promise you, I promise you, I know you're not a candle, but you're going to burn out. Think about it. When you have massive control, control this, control this, control this, all you're doing is exuding so much energy, so much time on controlling versus letting people do what they need to do so you can sit back and say, you know what? Wow, I like the way this is moving. I like the way this is moving. I need to change this. I need to change that because you're not in control of everything. And by the way, for those of you that think you are in control, believe me, you are not in control. The marketplace is moving in and out, in and out. Things are changing every single day. Stock market goes up, stock market goes down. If you think you have control over the marketplace, you're smoking some good shit, okay? You have no control over anything. The only thing you have control over is your choices and your decision-making process. That's the only thing you have control over. And a matter of fact, the one thing you should focus on controlling before you control anybody else, control yourself. Some of us don't even have a chance. To do, we, we don't even control our actions. I got, listen, this is, a, this is a problem for me. I sometimes don't control my emotions. So I gotta get good at that. How can I control someone else if I don't control myself? Think about that. That's a powerful thing to think about. It's very important to learn to control yourself and your emotions first before you even think about controlling anything else. Let's work on you, buddy. Let's work on ourselves first and then maybe we'll think about controlling someone else. But even then you'll realize that the only person you wanna control is yourself. You don't need to control anyone else. The second you control yourself, things go your way. Right? It's just being, by the way, this comes from me being introspective of myself and being self-aware and understanding who I was. Because back then, years ago, I wanted the control. And what I realized was the more control I have, the less control I really had. The less control I have, the actual more control on the process I did have, and I had stability in my life. Very important to understand that. Some of, this is very deep for some of you guys. Maybe it went over your head, but listen to that again, okay? Last, number five, limited growth capacity, okay? By being in control, Sometimes when we want to control, we limit the growth. I'll give you guys an example. Take a seed, plant it in, in the ground, and put a glass or something, a little box on that plant. As it's growing, there's going to be a ceiling it hits because you're trying to control the growth, right? You get sunshine, water, all that stuff. But if you try to confine it in a, in a glass bottle or put a little seed in a pot because you're controlling that pot, right? You're controlling that pot. You're not giving it a chance to grow wider. So sometimes we need to have the open space to plant the seeds so the, the roots can start you know, going everywhere they need to go so the tree can grow as fast and as big as it wants it to go. But if you take that seed and put it into a little pot, right, it's only going to grow as big as that pot. So sometimes when you try to control the environment, you try to control everything, what ends up happening, you limit the capacity for it to grow. I'll give you guys another example. You put five, six, I, I used to get offices that were a little bit smaller. I learned a long time ago, get a big ass office because the office will always get filled up to that capacity. Right? So if you get a small office that's, let's say, 300 square feet, it'll only fit as many people as it can fit in 300 square feet. But if you get an office that's 10,000 square feet or 5,000 square feet or 2,000 square feet, it'll fill up automatically. By default, nature says it wants to fill in to the capacity that it's given to. It's to the walls that it's given to. So in this office right now, we have about 2,500 square feet. I promise you, maybe we could fit like 50 people, 70 people, 80 people. We're never going to grow 80 people or more in this office, ever. It's impossible because there's not enough room. And that's why you need to kind of what? 
get bigger spaces. If I want to have 100 people in one room, which I don't want, but I'm just giving you an example, I got to get a bigger room. It's very important to understand that you limit the capacity for growth because you're controlling everything. So as you guys can see, controlling is not the answer. What you want is what? Order, right? You don't want control. You want order, right? Because order is not dependent on you, it's dependent on the system. Control is all dependent on you, and you don't want control. So I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Thank you so much. If you're not subscribed to the channel yet, do me a solid. Subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you guys, and we'll see you guys at 100,000 subscribers in the next video.